Michael Swickard here. Welcome to Enchanting Stories of New Mexico. This podcast is sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Our award-winning hatch green and red chili is brought straight to you from locally owned farms in Hatch, New Mexico. As you know, the chili capital of the world. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts. Speaking of New Mexico history, years ago at what was then White Sands Proving Grounds, now White Sands Missile Range, the Army base, they lost a test missile for just a little time. It was one of the V-2 rockets that we captured when Germany surrendered and was how we started doing research on rocketry. In March 29, 1947, the rocket took off as it should have when the countdown got down to zero. Up, up, up into the blue southern New Mexico sky it went majestically. But, and you knew that was going to be there, the German-built gyroscope caused it to swerve south rather than north. It crashed and exploded about three miles south of Juarez, Mexico, and their business district, the explosion shook every building in Juarez and across the border in El Paso. It left a 24-foot crater. The missile range safety officer had repeatedly pressed the destruct button. Nothing happened. Residents there thought an oil plant in Juarez had exploded and there were many red faces. It reportedly might have hit a cemetery. We said whoops and sent an apology and restored the damage. From then on, the destruct button was tested carefully every time before launch. When you hear the 1963 hit Sugar Shack, do you think of Raton, New Mexico? You should, since the Fireballs, that's the group, was formed there in 1957 as an instrumental group. The group recorded their hit song, Sugar Shack, at the Norman Petty Sound Studios in Clovis, New Mexico. This was in 1963, so they'd been playing several years. Over a million copies of the song Sugar Shack were sold just in 1963, stayed number one for a very long time on Billboard's Hot 100 Hits. The very distinctive sound on the recording was an organ played by none other than Norman Petty himself, and it's on display at the Norman Petty Studios today. At this time in, in 1598, Don Juan de Oñate was sent by the King of Spain to what he named New Mexico to take possession and to bring settlers all the way to present-day Santa Fe. He came through what is now El Paso, Las Cruces Hatch, and on up to Santa Fe. It's interesting to note that he inscribed on what people call Inscription Rock at El Moro. He wrote, I, Don Juan de Onate, paso por aquí. I passed by here. In 1926, Eugene Rhodes, a very famous author of the time, used that phrase, Paso por aquí, as the title of his most famous book. Again, it was called Paso por aquí. In 1948, the book was made into a Hollywood movie, Four Faces West, starring Joel McRae and his then real wife, Frances D. Despite being a Western, now get this, Pasaporaki was unusual because not a single gunshot was fired. Now, how many times have you heard somebody say, this job is going to be the death of me? Well, the first territorial governor of New Mexico, James S. Calhoun, had said it because he had so many problems being the first territorial governor. And to top it off, his health began to fail. So he decided to go on vacation back to his home state of Georgia. His feelings about his health were reflected in that just before he left on a wagon train headed east to St. Louis, get this. He had a carpenter build a coffin just in case. Well, he was correct because he did die somewhere near what is now Independence, Missouri. He was buried there. Not the typical vacation, eh? New Mexico is tied to green and red chili and is for all to enjoy from the Hatch Valley chili fields. 
We are all about chili with an E, as in hatch green chili. To be sure, I'm not talking about chili with an I, like the meal chili con carne. And certainly not the word chili with a Y, you know, like winter in Minnesota. Hatch chilies are chili pepper varieties that are commercially cultivated in the Hatch Valley of southern New Mexico. They have the designation Hatch Chili. When you see that, you know you've got something good. For those of you who are not from our little slice of heaven here in southern New Mexico, a lot ask, what is chili? We have the answer. Chili is the fruit from the chili peppers, capsaicin anum. It's a spicy enhancement to the flavor of food and a food in and of itself. Chili is a New Mexican and southwestern tradition, and it comes in many forms. You can get freshly picked chili from the field and used quickly. It can be processed into a jar with that same great fresh chili taste when you open the jar. It can be frozen so that when defrosted, the great chili flavor is realized. It can be dried so it can be reconstituted into great tasting food. Powdered into a spice, which uh, when added to, to something, the flavor is just great. Chili is an integral part of restaurant and home prepared meals. The recipes for its use of red and green chili are often handed down generation to generation, like in my family. The best compliment is when someone exclaims, This enchilada plate tastes exactly the way my grandmother used to make it, and I sure do love it. And I do hear that from my enchiladas. Originally, the chili peppers you found on your plate, if you were lucky to find them, were mostly grown in personal gardens in Mexico and New Mexico. But in the 20th century, it became a commercial crop developed by research at what is now New Mexico State University. The former cultivation of chili peppers as an agricultural commercial crop began on the campus of what is, uh, well, that was then New Mexico College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts. It is now called New Mexico State University at the start of 20th century. Research was done under the guidance of Dr. Fabian Garcia, who in 1913 released New Mexico 9, a milder tasting chili pepper than what was uh, for sale at that time. You'd say, why make it a little mild? Well, there was a good reason. With the flood of new residents coming to New Mexico, the normal garden-grown chili was simply too hot for the newcomers. So this work was done to tone it down just a little bit. There was also a desire to have a smooth chili pepper that could be canned and then shipped all over the country. That is what the Fresh Chili Company does now, which is ship jars of many varieties of chili salsa and sauce all over our country and to military installations so that the enchanting taste of New Mexico is available to all. If you're interested in the research into chili, you can always learn more at a, this web address, cpi.nmsu.edu. It's the Chili Pepper Institute. It's located on the campus of New Mexico State University in Thomas Hall, named after Gerald Thomas, one of our great presidents. They are constantly working on new varieties of chili. From the Chili Pepper Institute on the campus comes the news that New Mexico is the leading state in chili acreage. Red chili and paprika represent about 40% of the state's overall production. New Mexico chili varieties produce red chili when they are harvested after the fruit turns red. Paprika is a type of red chili and is used for low or no heat chili flavor. According to the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish, fishing is good this week. On their website is an interesting section that, that answers a question some people ask. When you've caught a New Mexico fish, should you release it or eat it? Well, it depends. And this website says determine the species and the length in inches of the fish. Find the lake or river where it was caught. Match the species uh, on the row and the size on the column of your fish to determine the number of meals, 8-ounce meals, that can be safely eaten each month. 
No advisory indicates that uh, an advisory is unnecessary. Have a good time with that meal. Zero indicates it's recommended that you not eat that that species or that size of fish. The fish was too small. If blank, the species and size of fish at that location have not been analyzed. Remember, if you have some great fresh caught fish and a few spices and a lot of good green chili, it will make for a great dinner. But there's something else. There's an opportunity for culinary fame. Take a picture of your freshly caught and then cooked fish dish with the fresh chili company seasoning, be it a dry rub, a salsa. Submit it to us and you can join our thousands of cooks in our chili cooking section. Upload your picture on Facebook and tag the Fresh Chili Company or ask to join our private group called Fresh Chili Cooking. You can upload there. There is so many good recipes. I'm telling you, you when you're thinking of how can I cook something, what can I cook that's a little different, that is something you can do. Here's one of the recipes on the Fresh Chili Company website. It is the McMillan Chili Con Queso Recipe. Now, what I like about it, it is quick, easy, and delicious. So you take one 32-ounce block of Velveeta cheese, cut it into small pieces. You'll add 16 ounces of Fresh Chili Company salsa with pure Hatch Green Chili or Hatch Red and Green Chili Blend Sauce. Now, I happen to like the red and green chili together, the blend. You add a 12-ounce can of evaporated milk. You mix all the ingredients in a microwave container. So microwave for three minutes and stir. Continue to do that every three minutes until your delicious chili con queso is smooth. And I will guarantee it is yum. Speaking of New Mexico State University in Las Cruces, oh, I love this story. Did you know that New Mexico A&MA, what it's now NMSU, used to occasionally make other football teams just furious, and there was nothing they could do. It was a summer prank that well, that it continued through the fall and when they were going to be playing at these other stadiums. The ag students at our college knew the value of fertilizer. Well, I know it too. And also knew back then that no team watered their football stadium grass until just before the season started in August of each year. So the grass was dormant during the first summer months. It just sat there. The Aggie football players, now it's rumored, I haven't actually talked to one who did this, but it's rumored they would travel quietly to the stadiums, not wearing their Aggie football jerseys, and they would be at the stadium where they were going to play during the football season that fall, and they would quietly, when no one noticed, go spread fertilizer on the field that they were going to play on to write a giant A for Aggies. On the, that's just dormant grass at the time. Nobody noticed until the water was applied. When in August the school would start to water the stadium grass, voila, what would you know? There was a large green A for all to see from the stands. Football coach Warren Woodson, the legendary coach, laughed about it, and there was nothing at all that the opposing teams could do but sputter about those darn Aggies. They were up to no good again. And I say, give them the fertilizer. But that whole prank has been rendered not effective by the new artificial turf in many stadiums. So it was a good thing then. One thing that happens when people live in Las Cruces is they can come by the Fresh Chili Company gift shop. It's located at 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite D7A in Las Cruces. It's open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. No need for shipping if you live close, but if you are living far away, here's a little something you might want to know. If you buy 12 jars... We offer free shipping if you live in the lower 48 states, so we exclude Alaska and Hawaii. Stock up and make sure you always have that delicious chili that makes a great present for somebody who lived here, moved away, and has that taste for Hatch Valley Green and Red Chili. 
Also, if you buy three jars, we'll donate one jar of our award-winning Mama's Salsa to a local food bank in New Mexico called Casa de Peregrinos. They provide school lunches and more to those in need in our community. This is Michael Swickard with the Fresh Chili Company podcast brought to you by the Fresh Chili Company. Thank you for your time today. We'll always have lots of news and stories about New Mexico for you. If you have something you want me to talk about, write to Michael at it's all together fresh chili co dot com. Michael at fresh chili co dot com. Have a great rest of your day and yes, eat plenty of good Hatch Valley chili. Like I always say, some chili's good, more is better. Bye for now.